I'm so delighted and excited to be here. We'll be in, in different parts of the world, Africa and beyond. Having this um, kind of program, the GCK, which is the gospel for every creature, is an answer in obedience to what the Lord Jesus Christ has commanded us to do, that he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And we're doing our part to make sure that the gospel reaches everyone as much as possible. We started the GCK more than two years ago now. We've been to different states in Nigeria and some parts of Africa. And also we recently, uh, in November, we were in India and uh, to reach out to the people. Uh, the GCK of this December is very special. Very special in the sense that we've been having our normal uh, national December retreat uh, since 1975. And uh, we've continued every year. And even though other programs come, we do not allow whatever program we're having to blot out uh, the December retreat. So we're still having this retreat and it's starting on the 23rd of December through to uh, the 25th. But the GCK, the crusade, which, is, uh, which has been coming up now at the end of every month from, till, from Thursday to Tuesday, will be starting on the 21st of um, December. And it runs through every evening until the 26th of December. In uh, the previous uh, crusades, uh, particularly in Lagos about uh, one year, uh, two years ago, 2021, where the GCK here and um, great things were done. Lives were redeemed and saved and uh, families united together. In fact, we even had the dead raised at that time. And uh, both, uh, you know, in different parts of uh, Nigeria. And uh, these things were confirmed by medical doctors. And uh, since we've been having this uh, crusade, we've seen blind eyes open, the dead hearing, cancer patients uh, being um, delivered and totally healed. And it's continued until this time. This time we're expecting something greater than we've ever had. And the theme is Emmanuel. And the whole world is celebrating the coming of Christ into the world. And we join the rest of the world to celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. And we believe it's going to be a wonderful time for all participants, both here at the Alpha Location Lagos, in all the in other parts of the world. Actually, we transmit uh, the GCK to more than 200 countries uh, at present. And many people are waiting and uh, they want to see it start uh, on the 21st uh, tomorrow. Great will be the uh, blessings from God for everyone. Yeah. And I thank you for being here to spread the message abroad that something unprecedented is taking place here. You are part of it, I'm part of it, and we'll all be part of it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Once again, I appreciate your coming. I appreciate your uh, working together, networking together with us to take the message of Christ, the message of love, to the rest of the world. Thank you very much and God bless you. Yeah. Uh, my name is Ivy Tano. I work for TVC News. Um, I'm permitted to ask two questions, hopefully. One is um, the coming crusade, uh, the crowd and security management, especially crowd management, because uh, what, what do you have in place for crowd management? On that day and also the security. Number two is also on Christianity that I'll take away from. A bit away from here, it's not political. Um, the Pope just announced uh, the blessing of same marriage, same sex marriage. And my question is uh, as a Christian leader, how does that make you feel? About, um, about the security and the protection of life uh, at the crusade. Uh, that issue has always been very important for us, and uh, we link up with the police. We, you know, we link up with security agents. 
and I want to assure you and assure everyone that there is maximum security protection of life and property. And um, we don't need to worry about that because uh, we've done it every time and I believe that this time uh, there is even greater security than we have had before. As for same-sex uh, marriage, uh, we, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ told us uh, before he left, he said, go into all the world and uh, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And then he said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have uh, commanded you. And he said, lo, I am with you till the end of the world. He also said that uh, heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word will not pass away. And so we stand obedient to Christ and submissive to Christ and we carry on the words of Christ that said it's a man and a woman that will be joined together in a marriage until death and do us part. That's where we have always stood, that's where we're still standing. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Lydia Inke. I work for Union Library Europe TV. Okay, my question will be centered around young people. You find that in our time, Many young people are distressed, and you don't find many of them around, you like say church or churches, you find there are so many distractions moving many of our young people away from the root of Christianity. Now, what is being put in place in this program that will capture the young people, not just capture them, but that will take them beyond what they see and hear, to make them begin to walk with God and find a place for themselves Thank you very much. Um, young people are looking for something that will make life meaningful for them. And because uh, there's no direct impact from different parts uh, you know, of the society, uh, they're searching for themselves. And um, I've been young myself before, and I'm still, as I always say, young at heart. And I have uh, vision as well as passion and mission towards uh, the young people and I you know we have a roadmap we have uh, the goals the ideals and everything what they're looking for they're searching for that they have not been able to find in the places they're searching for those things we don't condemn them we don't um, you know tell them you are wrong uh, but we want to show them an alternative and a better or the best alternative for them. And uh, this particular December, on Tuesday the 26th, we'll be having a youth impact. And I will be talking to them on what the coming of Emmanuel, the arrival of Emmanuel, can do in their lives to make them soar like the eagles. Uh, there's a lot in that, but I'm inviting all the young people that they'll have the redirection they ought to have in life and great things are going to happen to everyone that comes. And uh, they don't have to think of, how can I do this, how can I do that? We'll show them what we call baby steps that leads them to the discovery of what they're searching for. So I invite everyone, uh, youths and young adults and teenagers, I'm really eager to impart to them the great things that will happen, that they will take to the new year. Things are going to be different for them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Trina, we have the right for new telegram finish, but one of my questions has been answered regarding the, um, the stance of the Pope on same sex marriage in the program. My question has to do with the different views of some Christian leaders or churches regarding on um, Christmas. And why some believe that um, a person, a personality like Jesus Christ should be celebrated regardless of whether December 25th is the actual date of his death or not. Um, as a revered Christian leader, sir, what is your stance on the celebration of Christmas? Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Um, as a Christian leader and somebody who knows uh, the background of some of uh, these things, I've decided not to argue about the date and about uh, you know all the things that other people do or say. Uh, like when I say do or say, there are people that take uh, the Christmas period 
at the time of drinking and merriment and, and all that. And uh, obviously, those things and some other things people do, uh, those things do not honor Christ and they do not help us. They do not help, help our health. Uh, smoking, drinking, and all the things that people do actually impact on our health negatively. And that will not be the desire of Christ. But celebrating Christ, remembering Christ, you can do that anytime. In fact, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, we ought to be celebrating Christ because of what he came to do, because of the impact of his life and uh, ministry and sacrifice, not only on uh, Christianity, but on the whole world, on civilization. And uh, if people take up uh, this period to celebrate him, we join, you know, with the rest of the world, with the church, and we want to celebrate Christ too. And this, that's why we're choosing uh, this theme at this time, Emmanuel, God with us. This place now, because of economic hardship, uh, many things going on in the nation. Uh, in time of a program like this, what should I ever expect from this program, and what is our advice to the nation to be able to bring them so concerning our children? Thank you very much. Um, uh, periods of distress come and go, first of all, in the world. Uh, where the world, uh, the first world war, and then the second world war, and at the t at those times, distress came in every in every dimension, and then we just passed through COVID and nineteen, and it was a time of distress. But as we look up to the Lord and hope in the Lord, uh, we believe that for individuals and families and communities of people. Uh, we can address the distress. Uh, th there's something we each one has to, has to do. If a situation is there that I cannot avoid, I ask myself, what should be my attitude to this situation? My fretting, my worry, my uh, deliberately plunging myself into distress because of the situation will not solve the problem. What can I do? There's always a better side of things that in this situation, I can do some self-help things, a personal strategy that makes me live above uh, the situation. Then in the nation, uh, in the church, for example, uh, we should, uh, pastors of churches and leaders should look at members of the church and see whatever the church can do. Uh, it's good we evangelize, we're going out and we're doing this, but we spend some of our efforts and some of our resources in the church to help uh, people in the church that we know. And then the government, of course, uh, you know, we've been talking of palliatives, and I think that uh, the government should do something practical, something workable, that the people actually feel the effect of the palliatives we're talking about. But for each person, we are responsible for our lives, not to allow uh, the ocean of distress or difficulty or, or stress or things to uh, sweep us away. Uh, because many people are becoming mentally deranged because of the way they think of the situation. But when there's hope, there's uh, life. Uh, when there's life, there's hope, rather. And we should make sure that uh, we do not uh, you know, sync with the sinking situation that we have. Thank you, sir. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your children, men and women, ladies and gentlemen of the press. Thank you for the great work they are doing. We're asking, oh Lord, that you protect them in their service in Jesus' name. Amen. We also pray that as they are meeting the needs of uh, various parts of the nation, meet their needs in special ways in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we bless the people that uh, come to GCK, interact with uh, us at the GCK level, we're asking, Lord, that the same blessing you grant unto them in Jesus' name. Amen. Their good desires in their personal lives, in their professional life, in their family, grant them these good desires. Amen. Let Emmanuel have an impact positive in every life. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Christ our healer, our restorer, our deliverer is Emmanuel. Oh, when we call your name, you are never late. God with us, Emmanuel.